Okay, I'd like to consider now what, what makes something a strong or a weak acid. And let's look at this from the point of view of the molecular structure. So in this scenario, I've got a proton that's bonded to some rest of the molecule. That's the something here in the title. And the, the first consideration, I think, when you look at a molecule and you're trying to decide how acidic it might be, is to consider the atom to which that proton is initially bonded. So now if you just imagine going across the periodic table, for example, across row two, then hydrogens bonded to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, or, or fluorine are shown here. And this, uh, the further you go to the right on the periodic table, the stronger the, the acid is. This is basically an, an electronegativity effect. You can think about the, um, the uh, addition of negative charge to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and see that F minus is generally you would think of as being a more stable species than, than C minus. On the other hand, if you go down the periodic table, say down the halogens, um, acidity increases as you go down the, the periodic table. This has less to do with electronegativity or electron affinity and more to do with the strength of that hydrogen-halogen bond that you're, you're breaking. Okay, so periodic trends for acidity are that acids get stronger as you go from left to right or as you go from top to bottom on the periodic table. You can take those concepts and, and really explain them quantitatively in, the term of, in terms of a Hess's Law type analysis. Um, and if you're interested in that, then there's another video that, uh, that might be relevant for you to, to look at. Okay, so... Criterion number one is what atom is the proton bonded to. Uh, the second criterion I'd like to talk about is to consider the uh, presence of electron withdrawing groups uh, near the site of uh, deprotonation. And so let's first consider uh, the acid-base reaction of, of an alcohol. Uh, so here's methanol and loses a proton to give methoxide CH3O minus. As we change uh, the protons on that carbon atom, so this isn't directly bonded to the, the proton that's leaving, but just a, a bond or two away, and replace those hydrogen atoms with fluorine atoms, going CH2F, CHF2, CF3, what you find is that the acidity increases as you replace hydrogens with fluorines. A great way to consider why this is, is to look at the, the products of the acid-base reactions for methanol at the top and trifluoromethanol down at the bottom. And what you see is that at the, the bottom, you can distribute the negative charge uh, that's on that oxyanion, um, pulling it through the, uh, the bonding system, if you will, out to the fluorines. Another way to think about that is that those fluorines place a partial positive charge on the carbon to which they're directly attached. And so you get some electrostatic, uh, uh, electrostatically favorable interactions in the product of the acid-base reaction that you don't get in the reactant. That stabilizes the product here um, and makes the overall reaction more favorable, hence making trifluoromethanol more acidic than just methanol. In addition to electron withdrawing effects, resonance can play an important role in acid-base reactions. Okay, so let's look at another alcohol here. Consider ethanol, CH3, CH2OH. Here's the acid-base reaction for its deprotonation, loss of H+. Ethanol has a pKa in the vicinity of 15 or, or 16. It's a relatively moderate acid, or fa fairly weak acid, I should say. Now consider if we keep that hydrogen still bonded to an oxygen, that oxygen still attached to a two-carbon fragment here, but replace the CH2 with a carbonyl group, a carbon bo double bonded to an oxygen. And if you consider the acid-base reaction here, now you go from acetic acid on the left to acetate on the right and a proton. Just replacing those two hydrogens with a 
carbon double bonded to an oxygen drops the pKa by, a fa by 10. So acetic acid is 10 billion times, 10 to the 10th times, uh, stronger in acid than is ethanol. Now some of that uh, added acidity comes from an electron withdrawing effect, a polar effect. Uh, that carbon in the carbonyl group that's double bonded to the oxygen has a little bit of partial positive charge that's not there in the ethanol. But in addition to that uh, polar effect, there's also the fact that the acetate ion here is now stabilized by resonance. You can draw two resonance forms for that acetate ion where the negative charge is distributed evenly across those two oxygens. Those resonance structures are not available in the reactant in this equation, in the acetic acid itself, and they're also not available in the product of the acid-base equation at the top of the screen, ethanol going to ethoxide. And that added resonance stabilization contributes for roughly half of the uh, added acidity of acetic acid versus ethanol. So resonance structures in the products, in the conjugate bases of acids, make them stronger acids. And then the, the last factor in all of this, so uh, the atom effect, electron withdrawing effects or polar effects, and resonance effects all have to do with the intrinsic structure of the molecule. And the fourth is more of an environmental factor, and that's to think of the role of the surroundings, the role of solvent. So for some generic acid-base reaction, HX going to H plus and X minus, okay, uh, in cases where that reaction doesn't occur just for isolated molecules in the gas phase, right, in any condensed phased environment, there, those molecules are going to be interacting with their surroundings, and in particular, in solution, interacting with the solvent molecules that are around them. And the key point here is that, in general, those interactions, those, think about them as little electrostatic interactions between the solvents and the solutes, are going to be strongest for the charged species. If you have a positive charge interacting with, with a solvent, that's much greater uh, interaction than a neutral molecule interacting with a solvent. And not only those interactions on the right, the interactions of the ions stronger than they are for the, the neutral species, but they tend to be strongest first when the solvent has little areas of very localized charge. And, and in particular, if the solvent is polar, those interactions with the ions are going to be greater, and, and especially for things like hydrogen bonds. So if you imagine having an alcohol or water as a solvent, you've got these little localized regions of positive charge on the proton that can interact very favorably, in particular with anions, with X minus. Okay, so the character of the solvent governs how uh, important these solvation interactions are. And the character of, uh, of X minus, right? the proton's always the same if we're thinking about um, Bronsted acidity here. But X minus is different, and, and if X is small and has very localized negative charge, then those solvation interactions also tend to be much stronger. Okay, so for example, the hydration energy of fluoride, how favorably it interacts with surrounding water molecules is much stronger than the hydration energy of chloride, which is much stronger than the hydration energy of bromide, and so on. Okay? And so the, the smaller and more localized that concentration of negative charge is, the greater the solvation energies. So it's important to keep all four of these uh, possible effects in mind as you're trying to relate ideas of molecular structure and environment to acidity and acid-base reactions.